My name is Nabil Najjar and I am a costume and fashion designer from Detroit, Michigan. I graduated from the College for Creative Studies in 2016 and that's when I started my business in Shrisby. I would describe my work as dreamy and floral, though it does tend to fall on the conceptual side. Um, I usually have to come up with an idea or a concept behind the garment before creating it. I was always um, a creative kid, but I would say when I was about five, my dad taught me how to hand sew, and I started to try and make clothes for my Barbies, and then that's when I knew I wanted to be a designer. I was homeschooled up until college, so when I started CCS, it was my first school experience. I was extremely nervous and overwhelmed, but it taught me so much. Um, I really loved being in the fibers and textiles department. It pushed me to think in a different way when it came to creating my garments. I also wound up assisting and teaching at CCS in the summer programs for years, and it was really nice to be able to share my perspective and ideas with students. My biggest inspirations when creating my garments definitely comes from nature. The texture, shape, and color of flowers and plants always gives me ideas on new designs when sketching and sewing. I love working with models. Planning shoots is always such an experience. Choosing various models and seeing how they bring their garments to life is so cool to me. Every shoot is always going to be different. My favorite piece at the DIA is titled Hope and Faith Rondell by John LaFarge. It's the three panel um, stained glass windows and it's so beautiful. What I love about it is the colors and the style of um, the people portrayed in the piece. It kind of inspires um, the style of my garments a bit. But I would say one of my favorite memories at the DIA um, is being able to create um, the sculpture for Isabel and Ruben Toledo's Labor of Love exhibition um, that was sponsored by the FJC. Um, that was my favorite memory at the DIA to just be able to create a sculpture and have it displayed there amongst some of the old greats was a memory I'll never forget. So today I'll be showing you how I make my blouses. I usually start off with a concept and a sketch. And I'm gonna say like my work is pretty intuitive also. So even when I sketch sometimes, it may not always turn out exactly like what I have in mind. I like to try to mix in like natural dyeing with some of the chemical dye that I like to use a lot. Coffee is always my favorite to work with because it kind of mellows the color out. So let's see what we can create. I know that I don't dye the traditional way, but in here there's a bit of the dusty orange and old rose. And then I put the coffee. So here is the color. It'll look a little different when it's dry, but 
Here we are. Here's the fabric I dyed and it's all cut out and ready to start being attached together. So we're gonna begin sewing. Doesn't look like much yet, but once it's put together, it'll be a pretty garment. One thing about me when it comes to my work is that I am definitely not a traditional seamstress. <laughs> I always make the joke that other sewers um, went frown upon how I cut and sew my designs. I have only taken one professional sewing class at CCS and it taught me so much, but I am mostly self-taught so my ways of sewing are definitely interesting and intuitive. So here is the final blouse. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It was definitely an intuitive piece to work on because I was kind of just sewing and going with the flow. But here it is. I feel like the fashion world is always changing. It can definitely be intimidating at times. Trying to get your name out there when there's so many huge name brand designers is a bit overwhelming. But I always think they started somewhere and got to where they are now, so that always pushes me to keep designing. <laughs>